So in this video, I want to attempt to explain the molecular polarity and how to determine molecular polarity. The first question to ask is, is there a localization or an asymmetrical distribution of electron density in the molecule? The localization generates something called the dipole in the molecule, which essentially is a lopsidedness of uh, electron fuzz. So saying it's slightly different and taking a look at a couple of examples, polar if dipoles exist in a molecule. So localization of electron density generates dipoles. So dipoles are inherent in polar molecules. For example, HF and water. And the electrostatic diagram below each Lewis structure indicates where the lopsidedness or the localization of electron density or electron fuzz would be. So there are two ways to communicate dipoles when you want to use a Lewis structure. You could use these delta signs, delta positive, delta negative, delta negative being of course the side or the end of the molecule where there's more electron density or localization of electron uh, density. The other way to show polarity in a Lewis structure is to use an arrowhead and a cross at the other end of the arrowhead. The arrowhead itself would represent the end or the side of the molecule where there's a localization of electron density or a buildup. I'll apply this approach to determining molecular polarity to two types of molecules, diatomic molecules and small molecules with one central atom. Determining if a diatomic molecule is polar is reasonably straightforward. Electronegativity differences are typically used to determine if a diatomic molecule is polar. If the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms in the diatomic molecule is greater than 0.4, then the molecule is deemed to be polar. HCl, HF are good examples. Nonpolar molecules that are diatomic are H2, O2, and N2. Determining if a small molecule with one central atom is polar takes a bit more investigation. The first two scenarios are a guarantee that the molecule is polar. And that is, if there is one lone pair of electrons around the central atom, or if there are two or more lone pair of electrons around the central atom positioned in an asymmetrical manner. I'm going to use a molecular geometry reference to illustrate these two situations. When we evaluate molecules or molecular geometries with one lone pair, it should be pretty evident that there is a localization of electron density in the molecule, therefore the molecule is polar. And this is regardless if the terminal atoms are identical or different from one another. When evaluating molecules where there are two or more pairs of electrons around the central atom, sometimes it's helpful to define a two-dimensional environment or plane through the central atom. In the situation where we have four regions of electron density in this bent or angular geometry, I'm going to define the plane horizontally for this figure through the central atom. And I see that there are two lone pairs on one side of the plane and no lone pairs below or on the other side of the plane. This localization of electron density deems this uh, geometry or molecule polar. And it doesn't matter if these two uh, terminal atoms here are different or identical. In the case of T-shaped, where we have five regions of electron density, uh, for this figure I'm going to define the plane vertically through the central atom. And I see the same situation where there's two lone pairs on one side of the plane. And then for T-shaped, where there is six regions of electron density, I'm going to evaluate the plane, again, vertically through the central atom, as this figure is shown. And I see that there are two lone pairs on one side of the plane and one on the other side. So there is clearly an asymmetrical distribution of electron density of the plane. Now I'll get to the situations 
where there are two or more lone pair electrons around the central atom and the molecule is not polar. We first need to assume that the terminal atoms that are in the molecule are identical to one another. So in the case of square planar where there are six regions of electron density, I'm going to define the plane horizontally through the central atom and I'm going to imagine a square in that plane. And I can see now that there is a lone pair of electrons above the square or the plane and one below. And because these identical atoms are in a square, they are symmetrically distributed in this plane. Therefore, this molecule does not have a localization of electron density. In the case of linear, where we have five regions of electron density, I'm imagining the plane again going through the central atom in a horizontal manner, and I'm going to imagine a triangle in this plane. Now the way this figure is drawn, it might be a little bit misleading that the angles between these lone pairs might be different, but this is an isosceles triangle where there's 120 degrees between the lone pairs. So that means there is a symmetrical distribution of electron density in this triangle. And we also notice then above and below the plane there are identical atoms. So there is no localization or asymmetrical distribution of electron density in this molecule. And finally with linear where there are six regions of electron density, I'm going to imagine a square in this plane through the central atom. There is a symmetrical distribution of electron density in this square. I also notice the identical atoms above and below the square. Therefore, there is no localization of electron density or asymmetry of electron density in this molecule or geometry. And lastly, we'll get to the scenario where the molecule is likely polar if there are two or more different surrounding atoms. This is where we need to carefully examine the molecular geometry. Now let's take a look at the situation where there are no lone pair electrons around the central atom, but the terminal atoms are different from one another. So I'm going to use an O for a different terminal atom or surrounding atom. So in the case of linear, where we have two different surrounding atoms, this sets up a scenario where there's asymmetrical distribution of electron density around the central atom, so we could assume that this linear geometry with no lone pairs and two different terminal atoms is polar. In the case of trigonal planar, where there are no lone pairs, if one of the terminal atoms or surrounding atoms is different from the other two, this can also set up a situation for asymmetrical distribution. So we could assume the molecule would be polar. And then if there are three different terminal atoms, and I'll use a P, there are three different terminal atoms around that central atom. We could assume, again, that the molecule is polar. In the case of tetrahedral, if one of the four atoms is different from the other three, then the molecule can also be assumed to be polar. Now, what if there are two identical atoms and then the other two atoms were different? Let's say these were P's. Um, this is also a scenario for asymmetrical distribution, and we could assume the molecule to be polar. Let me evaluate that using a plane as I did earlier in this video. So what I'm going to do is draw the plane through the central atom in that manner. So now we could see these two identical atoms are on one side of the plane, and these other two different atoms are on the opposite side of the plane. So because of that, there's potential to have an asymmetrical distribution of electron density. So in summary, we could say that if there are at least two different terminal atoms or surrounding atoms around the central atom, then we could predict the molecule as polar. Now let's take a look at the situation for a trigonal bipyramidal and octahedral where we have no lone pairs but different terminal atoms. Let's say, for instance, that these two atoms opposite of one another were different from the other three, and the other three were identical to one another. This situation would um, 
set up a symmetrical distribution of electron density because we have identical atoms on opposite sides of this plane. And in this plane, there's this triangle. And in the triangle, there are three identical uh, atoms, although they are different from these two that are opposite of one another. This is a symmetrical distribution of electron density. But let's say, for instance, this atom was an O atom. There would be an asymmetrical distribution set up in this triangle, therefore the molecule would be assumed to be polar. Similarly, if we were to have two different atoms in opposite sides, as I'm pointing out here, but the same atoms in the triangle, this would also set up an asymmetrical distribution because these two atoms opposite of one another are different from one another. So we would assume that the molecule would be polar. And with octahedral, a similar situation can happen. If these two atoms opposite of one another are identical, and these four atoms in the square are identical to themselves, then this is a symmetrical distribution of electron density. Therefore, the molecule would be nonpolar. But if one of these atoms in the square were different from the other three, even if it were identical to the O, this would set up an asymmetrical distribution of electron density in the square, so we could assume the molecule would be polar. And likewise, if the atoms opposite of one another were different, the molecule would have an asymmetrical distribution, even if the four atoms in the plane were identical to one another. Therefore, this would be a polar molecule. Now let's take a look at the situation where there are two lone pair electrons around the central atom. We have already established before that bent or angular and T-shaped are polar regardless of the terminal atoms, whether they are, are identical or different from one another. These geometries uh, represent polar molecules. In the case of square planar, although, we learn that if the terminal atoms are identical to one another, the molecule is nonpolar. But if any one of these four terminal atoms or surrounding atoms are different from the other, the molecule would be polar. There would be an asymmetrical distribution of electron density set up in this square. Even if two adjacent atoms, if those two atoms are identical and the other two are, are different on the opposite side, this would also set up an asymmetrical distribution of electron density. Therefore, the molecule would be polar. And let's take a look at where there are three lone pairs around the central atom. We already established before that T-shape is polar regardless of the terminal atoms or the surrounding atoms. Linear, on the other hand, can be nonpolar or polar. If these two surrounding atoms are identical to one another, the molecule is deemed to be nonpolar. But if one atom is different from the other, the molecule to be polar. And finally, with linear geometry with four lone pairs, if these two surrounding atoms are identical, we already assessed or determined that the molecule would be nonpolar. But if one of these atoms is different, then the molecule can be polar. 